Beloved God, we are so thankful for this place and for this opportunity to worship you. We're so grateful for our sisters and brothers who gather with us week in and week out to build each other up in faith, to encourage one another, and to be mindful of your word and your impact that you have upon our lives. And so this morning as we gather at this early hour, we gather to thank you, to praise you, to acknowledge you, and to inspire us to go back out into the world and to live as we believe. And so we ask God now as we have sung, as we have prayed, as we have listened to the word from Scripture, that we may now be settled enough in our own spirit so that we may be open and ready to receive of the good news of Jesus the Christ. So bless us and prepare us, enlighten us, bring us to that place of inspiration so that we may be an inspiration to others. And now, God, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, that you would mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In the name of Jesus, the Christ. Amen. Today is Recovery Sunday, and in our church every year, we celebrate a month of recovery to acknowledge folks within our congregation um, who are in a journey to recovery. And we acknowledge that whenever we talk about recovery, we generally think about recovery from drugs or recovery from alcohol, perhaps the 12-step programs that surround us in our community, uh, perhaps even from crystal meth addiction. We always tend to talk about recovery at those levels, but we come to remember each recovery month that recovery month is not just about the other. Recovery month is really about us. It's about you and I engaging in the reality that all of us are in recovery from something. That we're all in recovery from something that has happened to us in our lives, or something that's happened that's been traumatic, or perhaps something that we're still trying to work through in our own personal lives. So Recovery Month is not about the other, it's not about all of the other people. Recovery Month is really about us. It's about our own journey to wholeness. It's about our own journey to being well and to living well. And that's what Scripture was talking about this morning, about living well and how we live well as human beings. Now, I want to put this into a bit of a context, uh, because the book of Corinthians, the Paul's letter to the church at Corinth, uh, the first book, um, is a book of kind of like telling the Corinthians off. It's, it's telling those people off for what they've done and how they're living and, and, and what they're doing around their own observance of God in their lives. And it's an interesting read. If you ever you want to go back and read the whole of uh, the book of the first book of Corinthians, uh, you'll get a sense of what the Apostle Paul is trying to, to, to tell those, those people about their own lives. It seems like they were doing all sorts of things and some of them weren't quite so good for them. But they also seem to be very critical of one another about how they were living and how they were also observing the presence of God within them. Now, obviously, there was a turnaround in their lives and a turnaround in their own sense of church. Uh, because when you read 2 Corinthians, you also get Paul's perspective of blessing them and thanking them for all the changes that have gone in their lives. So it's a, it's a wonderful journey, if you wish, to read 1 and 2 Corinthians to see how Paul's theology and how the people uh, have reacted to the presence of spirit in their own lives. And I think that's what Paul was trying to get at over and over again in his, his own letters to these early churches, was that you couldn't just speak the truth. You needed to live the truth. And you needed to live it out loud and you needed to live it well. You see, the early folks had uh, one way of worshipping and sometimes that way of worshipping was just to be out in the temple courts with their hands raised so that everybody could see them. But the reality is it had nothing to do with their lives. It didn't change them. There was nothing about their faith that inspired them to live differently, to live well. And they were obviously very critical of one another. I love the opening passage to this particular uh, piece of 1 Corinthians where the, the Apostle Paul uh, seems to be saying, um, all things are uh, permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Now that's from the New International Version. We had a different version this morning. It came from the message, and that's one of my favorite paraphrases of Scripture. But Paul was saying that to these folks, and I think he's saying to each and every one of us, that, that all things are permissible but not everything is beneficial. You know, I found in ministry over and over again that the things that I can do in my life, um, or the th I should say the things I can't do in my life, you know, there's lots and lots of things we can, we can do, but the things that I can't do in my life, 
that because they're not very good for me, they're not beneficial for me, that there are other Christians who seem to be able to do it quite well and seem to be able to, to, be able to manage their lives in a very different way than I can manage my own life. That there are some things in my life that I find that I am a little addicted to. You know, I, I know that uh, I've often said that I think I'm in recovery from workaholism, uh, that sense of always having to be busy, always having to do things. There are there other folks in our congregation that have that same kind of notion that if you're not doing something that you feel guilty about not doing something? Oh, good. I'm glad I'm not the only one. We're, start, we're, st we're going to start a new 12-step group just for us. Just to, to that realization that, you know, sometimes just sitting still and doing nothing is one of the greatest gifts that we can have. And yet, I don't know about you, but I feel guilty when I'm just, it's like idle hands will find naughty things to do. And so perhaps it's really good for me. Perhaps it is beneficial that I keep my, myself busy uh, and not do any of those naughty things that perhaps we could get ourselves into. Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. I've certainly found that with folks in the 12-step meetings is that, you know, I, I, I enjoy a, a drink sometimes. I know that's shocking for some people that a pastor would actually drink alcohol. I get that over and over again when I'm out and people say, well, do you actually drink? I say, yes, and I use the toilet as well. But you know, it's a, you know, uh, but you know, some people are really quite critical of some of the things that they think pastors shouldn't be doing. Reverend Pat, do you have that same experience every now and again? Yeah, or are you one of those really goody, goody two-shoe people? Yeah, yeah. yeah but, <laughs> I'm glad I know Reverend Pat really well. But I know that there are lots and lots of folks where one drink is just not permissible. That one drink is too much. And a thousand drinks is not enough. Recovery month is a reminder for each and every one of us that we're in recovery from something and yet we should never judge one another for the things that we get ourselves into but rather we should work out for ourselves that which is beneficial to us. And if having one drink is not beneficial, then we need to support one another and say that that's not a good thing for you. I have a friend in my own life right at this very moment where I know that alcohol is just driving them to destruction. And it's been really, really tough, sisters and brothers, to be able to talk with this person about their own drinking habits. And it's been really, really tough to be able to put in some, some boundaries in my own life and with his life and to, to say to him, you know, I'm, I'm willing to socialize with you, but I'm not willing to socialize with you if there's alcohol in the premises. I'm not willing to, to break that boundary because I can see what that is doing to your life. I can see the destruction of that road and it's not that I want to judge that person, it's not that I want to be nasty to that person, but it's almost that tough love that says, you know, I can't be around you when you're drinking alcohol. I, I can't be around you because what that does is it upsets my spirit. And I know that it's leading you to a pathway of destroying your own life. Paul says everything is, everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. In our own community, right at this very moment, we continue to see the number of folks who are uh, taking crystal meth, as a way of, 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 I don't know, somehow building up a self-esteem that I think is just ruining a self-esteem. So many of our community are using drugs and alcohol to hide the pain of loneliness, to hide the pain of, of something that's happened to them in their own lives that has caused them to have low self-esteem. 